Hello, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. Today, I'm going to talk about how to play Ticket to Ride. Before I get started, however, I would like to point out some things that I believe this is a great game to add to a family game night rotation. Also, this would be the base game, and I will also go over the 1910 expansion for the base game, which is the USA map, and a couple of other little things. To set up the base game, uh, first up the board, then give each player uh, the color of trains of their choice. We have green, blue, red, yellow, and black. Uh, for this example, I will be using the blue trains. Grab the scoring token for each player and put it on the 100 or the zero over in this corner. Each player will start with 45 trains. There are a couple spares in the box in case you lose them. There are uh, train cards uh, with trains on the back and uh, cars on the front. They do have this little player aid um, with each of the colors on them and how many are in the deck. And there's also a uh, scoring aid as well. This scoring aid is also on the board. So you're going to shuffle those cards and deal four to each player. After dealing four to each player, put them on the side of the board and you're going to deal five face up. Next, you're going to shuffle up and deal tickets. First, let's go over what the tickets are. Uh, they will tell you two cities on the map in a miniature version of the map with two dots indicating a general location of where they are to help you look for them and a point value. This point value, if you complete the ticket by connecting the two cities, any route that you see capable, then you will score these points at the end. However, if you do not complete the route, then you will lose these points at the end of the game. So when you shuffle them, you will deal three to each player. Each player will look at the tickets, determine which ones are going to keep, which ones they're going to get rid of. However, they do have to keep at least two of them. Usually a good strategy will be trying to find tickets that are near each other or have some semblance of similarities. Like for example, in these two, they're both in the West. So it's my choice. Maybe I can try to accomplish all three. I will say that when trying to figure this out, keep in mind that you do have 45 of these trains. Definitely you might want to count your tracks and see what the shortest route is or the most valuable or trying to put that into your decision making is how many trains will it take you to hit each of those cities. Once players have decided if they're going to keep all three or two of their tickets, they do have this bonus card. If you want, you can add it nearby the board so that everybody remembers that it is a bonus scoring at the end of the game worth 10 points. The longest continuous train will get 10 points. Also, put the remaining tickets near the board so that they can be used later. Now we're ready to start the game. On your turn, or when it is your turn, uh, you're going to have one of three options. The first option is to draw more tickets. Uh, remember that if you don't complete them, you will lose points. When you decide to draw tickets, you will draw the top three, look at them, decide which of them, if any, you're going to keep, and discard the rest. There is a rule that you have to keep at least one, so you can't get rid of all of them. If, if you feel that the tickets are very difficult and you won't be able to complete any, the best solution is to take the lowest point. That way, if you cannot complete it, it won't hurt you as much. So let's say that was an action that I would have taken. Discarding the rest, we'll go to the bottom of the deck. The second option that you can do is to take train cards. These train cards are of a variety of colors, as I briefly mentioned. There are six colors and wilds, 14 wilds. Uh, those are locomotives, specifically. So when you take train cards, you can either take out of the face-up cards or blindly off the top of the deck. You can take any two 
in any combination. So you can take two off the deck, maybe you want to take two cards here, or maybe one here, one here. However, there is one restriction, and that is if there is a visible wild here, you could only take the one because it is a powerful card and be used to replace any color. So as an example, if I wanted to take this white card, I can, I will immediately replace it. And then let's say for my second card, I want to take off the top of the deck. It just happens to be green. Now, if you happen to take a wild blindly off the top, that's okay because it's blind and it's kept secret. So no one has to know that it is a wild or you manage to successfully get lucky by drawing it. Also, one more thing is if there are ever three wilds face up, then the entirety of the face up cards will be wiped clean and go to a discard pile and you will refresh the face up cards. So remember, when you are taking cards, if you even if you decide to take two face up cards, take them one at a time, just in case that triggers in between your pulls, because it will get cleaned in between your pulls. And the last option that you can accomplish is to play trains. In order to play trains, you must play cards and claim a route, as it would be stated in the rules. You must play cards equal to the number based on the length and color of the track you're trying to claim. So for example, if I wanted to, let's say, let's say if I want to claim this track right here, that is three oranges, I would need to play three oranges. So if that happened to be in my hand, I can say playing three oranges to claim this route. I would take three of my trains, put them on the board like so, discard the cards using to claim it. Uh, as I mentioned, any of these three can be replaced with wilds or entirely with wilds. And then I will claim points based on its length. So in this situation, that is a length of three, therefore I will claim four points and move the score marker four points for blue. Now, each length of train does have its own points. Here is the scoring for the length of train. Length of train, points. As you notice, there are some double trains and there are some gray trains. The gray trains, or tracks I should say, are a any color goes. So if I wanted to claim this length of two gray, I can play two of any same color. So for example, if I wanted to claim this, I can play two greens. And I can claim that for two points if I wanted to. Now these double tracks, the way these work is in a two or three player game, once one person claims one of these tracks, the other one is closed off. So that means that you kind of have options. So for this track, I can play four blacks or four oranges, whatever one gets first in my favor. If I get four blacks before I can get the oranges, then I'll use, maybe I'll use those to claim the track. And now the orange one is no longer available for the rest of the game. In a four or five player game, both tracks can be claimed as long as they're being claimed by two different players. The same player cannot claim both tracks. Or the game will end when a player has played trains and they has two or fewer trains left in their supply. Everyone around the table, including the player who triggered the last round, will get a final turn. The person with the highest total after the game ends, everyone takes their last turn, scores any final trains played on that final turn, and then adds up any completed tickets and subtracts any incomplete tickets, will win. And that's how you play the base game of Ticket to Ride. I will now go ahead and start explaining the expansion. In this expansion, 1910, for USA map, it gives you a whole new set of train cards to replace the tiny ones that come in the base game. As you can see, there's quite a significant difference from something that's more or less travel sized, probably saves in the production, to something of a standard size card. Along with that, you are given a replacement for all the tickets and additional tickets. This one is part of the big cities expansion. As you can see here, 
It has a logo for the big cities, but there's also big cities around the points. Other than that, they do have 35 new tickets in addition to the uh, standard tickets, I believe. So this one is a standard ticket in a standard game. As you can see, no extra stuff. I mentioned the big cities already. And uh, there is a faint 1910 here, which indicates that it is a new, a new ticket uh, that only comes in this uh, expansion. There's also four mystery train expansions that came with a mini expansion that was a promotion. It was a mini expansion that was released in 2004 and is no longer in print. When playing with the 1910 expansion, there are three variants included in the rules. The 1910, which is standard rules, but you play with only the 1910 uh, included cards with the 1910 printed on it, as well as the additional bonus Globetrotter, which is for the most completed tickets, gets an additional 15 points. There's the big cities, which you play with all the big city tickets exclusively, and you start the game with dealing 40 each player, keeping at least two. And when you draw them in the middle of the game, you will take four and must keep at least one. And then there's the mega game that you use all tickets included in the expansion. You deal five, you must keep at least three at the beginning. And then when you draw in the middle, you draw four, keep at least one, and you play with both the Globetrotter bonus and the longest train bonus. And that concludes the 1910 expansion. I will briefly mention there is a 10th anniversary of this game that has really nice cards. Basically has the, this expansion included in it with the bigger cards. It has a bigger board. It has special trains in each in the collective tin. And that is the 10th anniversary. It is out of print and no longer available unless you buy it at very high prices. There's also a 15th anniversary, which what it's have is translucent trains for all of the colors. So I happen to have uh, the translucent blues and blacks. So you can see that this is uh, translucent versus the solid blue color um, here. This will be the first Ticket to Ride game I explain, and coming this year, I will try to get all the Ticket to Ride variations and maps that we have in our collection. The different maps each have a twist in the rules that allow us to not overplay a map. That was my video on Ticket to Ride and how to play. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below, and bye bye for now.